interesting conversation with Rajiv Mimani, the chairperson of Ansan Young India. So thank you very much for talking to us on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum. Um, you know, from people we've been speaking to, we've been getting mixed signals on where we stand. So interestingly, many people I spoke to today said, while well, you know the global economy continues to remain precarious, uh, China interestingly is sounding more optimistic now. Yeah. Uh, give us your own sense of you know what your read-throughs are based on the sessions you've attended, people you've been speaking to here. Yeah, no, thank you very much. So the sense I get, Paul, well, um, I'm getting is that. Obviously, you know, the IMF had also mentioned that they're anticipating a mild recession. Uh, and, um, but, but it is, it will not be, it will not be as bad as people thought. So most people feel that the worst is probably behind. Um, inflation is not, uh, the worst of inflation is over and it will rapidly sort of normalize. Not, it won't reach the normal levels, but it will come to more controllable levels more rapidly. Uh, China is also, you know, that was also one of the factors looming in. With the opening up, I think there is a sudden pop-up. How mm -hmm. long it sustains, I think people will have to see. And the most of the negatives around broken supply chain, you know, the issues around the war have been factored in. So I would say, uh, mo yes, definitely a, a mild slowdown uh, in some parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, in other parts of the world, like in Middle East, mm -hmm. India, parts of Asia, I think people are... So, so I think that is the. Uh, I, I would say that's the sort of that's the broad construct that we are seeing. On India, uh, you know, people are generally positive. Uh, mm. India is a great story. In fact, to say. IMF described it as a bright spot. As a bright spot. Mm. Um, so I would say India, Middle East, as I said, are, are the bright spots that people are looking at. Uh, people are ex are and looking forward to investing in India. Uh, and uh, and I think it's really upon upon us to ensure that we capitalize this uh, great opportunity that is there with us right now. Right, and um, you know you uh, I mean of course people are talking about bright spot and everything, but uh, could inflation play spoil sport? Uh, the RBI you know is still hawkish. It will take some time uh, for their rate hikes to sort of reflect on uh, you know, the inflation trajectory. So uh, could that play spoil sport? I would say it's going to correct from where it was earlier. So even mm. if you look at November, December, you look at the December CPI numbers, uh, December uh, WPI numbers are less than uh, 5%. So I think it's gradually coming under control. Mm. Um, uh, RBI obviously uh, has done a stellar job in mm. steering this economy through in the last mm. two, three years along with the government. So I'm sure they'll do, uh, they all realize the most important priority for India's growth mm. and employment. And, but in a manner that is sustainable in the long term. So whenever I think there is greater comfort, and I, I think by and large you hear the noise that inflation is more or less coming under control globally. I mean, I think the worst is behind us, you know, and some part of inflation till the time supply chains don't get fixed may still sustain, but not to the extreme that we saw last year. Right. I saw an interesting report today, sir, on how India could end up producing half of, you know, the overall iPhone uh, production in the world. And I mean, this is a prediction by 2027. Apple is already increasing in depend its dependence on India. And India is being positioned now as a manufacturing hub. I mean, people call, call it China plus one or Europe plus one, various terms floating around. But uh, could that be the next big leg up uh, for us? Yeah, I mean, so if I look at the Indian growth story, a lot of it has, has been around the IT services. Yes. Services uh, still account for the majority. Majority of this GDP. thing, if, even if you look at GDP growth, it's the highest. Uh, but the big opportunity and a very important one for India from an employment standpoint, uh, you know, right now manufacturing is 16% of GDP. Yeah. And if we have to move to more than 20%, then that pivot has to happen. So all the initiatives that have been taken under Atmanirbhar Bharat, hmm. uh, the PLI schemes and everything else that have been put, I think they augur well for manufacturing. You know, on specific issues, uh, whether uh, iPhone will shift 50%, it's very hard to say. I, I think it will be difficult. A lot of it will also depend on what's the consumption in India. Hmm. But definitely from whatever I have seen, uh, if, if six, seven years back, eight years back, if India was importing almost 95% of their own mobile phones that they were mm. selling in India, today I think India is an exporter of mobile phones. Yeah. And a large part of their consumption now is made through domestic manufacturing mm. and also export is picking up. So to that extent, I think those stories are uh, on, 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 on manufacturing are coming to fore. 
uh, and as the PLI schemes gets gets rolled out, uh, you know this will be even more effective. What I think as a as the government that is industry we have to see is also focus a lot on labor intensive manufacturing. I think that is if we are successful in also the future age of manufacturing, which is what whether it is the batteries and the mm. EV cars and and mobile phones and technology and everything, which is very critical. Mm. I think similarly labor intensive manufacturing, you know whether mm. it's garments or others, is very because that's what also generates. Employment, which I think, if India can uh, generate a high level of employment, then I think that solves most of the problems. Right. Um, we are just, you know, two weeks away from the union budget. <laughs> so, is there a one big reform or one big, you know, announcement that you would like to see? No, I would say that the existing policies, honestly, have have enabled. are are, are mm -hmm. enabled. They're playing out very well. I I would say that, uh, and I'm very sure, looking mm -hmm. at the government also. Uh, and mm. their track record that the macroeconomic uh, mm. sort of broad discipline that they've been following has been fantastic. I think if we can execute on all the announcements that have been made on the, all the projects that have been announced, mm. on all the uh, policies that have been laid out, get it implemented at the center, more importantly, get it implemented mm. at states. Mm. I think that in itself, I think the reform, a lot of reform has played out now. I think we have to ensure that that gets executed on the ground. And I, you know, if I look at overall, I, I would say that GDP growth of 7%, uh, you know, probably fiscal deficit of what we had projected of close to, you know, 6.3, 6.4%, whatever that final number comes out to be, buoyancy in tax revenues. Uh, you know, there is, uh, you know, growth may be slightly slower as compared to what we experienced this year, but, you know, still, you know, sort of, I would say in the 55 6% kind of growth. Uh, if you add inflation to it, you know, almost probably we'll see 13, 14% growth in tax revenues. A lot of the spends last year were when commodity prices were at its peak. So hopefully some of that, uh, you know, uh, will, as it peters out, I think that gives great elbow room to the government to, to spend money. Uh, so, so I would say that overall, I'm, uh, I, I'm not, I mean, I'm sure that there are, there will always be big bang announcements, but I would say that I, I'm not uh, looking at it from a big bang announcement. I think as long as we see continuation, Hmm. Of what we what has been achieved and execution of the policies, hmm. that's the most important thing. Right. Finally, sir, um, is this also going to be a challenging time for EY India with the global split and everything that's happening? Are you worried about retaining talent, attracting talent in the process? No, I think so. That decision is is happening uh, is happening globally. Hmm. Uh, so uh, I think whenever, as and when it gets uh, done globally, I think you know it will it will get in, in implemented in India. Also in India, as it is, we operate. Hmm. The audit and the non audit side operate separately. Hmm. So it's not that much of a challenge. In fact, I see that <clears throat> if it happens globally as well, then I think it opens up greater opportunities. Great. On that note, Mr. Mimani, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank, thank you, you so much.